Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this super cute princess peach doll cake. This video is in collaboration with Mark over at Epic Confections, Rosie from Rosie's Dessert Spot, and Lorelai from Wedding Cakes for You. I have all their videos linked below in the description box, so be sure to check them out. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. All that said, let's get started. To start off, I have three layers of vanilla cake that I've dyed pink because I can be fun too. <laughs> and I also have some pink Swiss meringue buttercream and I'm just filling those with my small offset spatula. I added one five inch round on top of those six inch cakes and then a little four inch cake on top of that. I put that in the fridge to chill just so it could firm up a teensy bit. And then I'm gonna start carving the skirt of the dress. So I'm going for like an A-line cut here, tapered at the top. I don't want any gaps in between those layers. Once I was happy with the shape, I marked in the pleats in the dress. So I tried to space them out evenly. And then I just dug out that line a little bit so that it would be indented. I did it a little bit deeper than I wanted it to look as the final result, just because I needed to factor in adding buttercream and fondant on top of that. If you don't make these deep enough, the pleats aren't gonna show up at all. This cake was really moist, AKA super crummy. So I added a thin crumb coat just to lock those all in there and then pop this in the fridge for about 25 minutes to chill. Once I could touch my finger to the buttercream and then it came off, it was ready to go for the final ice. So one more layer on there and then I just smoothed it out as best I could with my small offset spatula and I went back in with this piece of cardstock just because it can curve to the shape of the cake and I'm going to get a smoother finish. Once everything was all smoothed out, I did go back in with my spatula and just scraped out any buttercream that had accumulated in any of my pleats. I've dyed some fondant a pink color that I added just a scotch of violet to, just an eensy bit. You want it to be like a bubblegum pink. And I'm rolling that out on my cornstarch surface to about an eighth of an inch thick. I picked that up and draped it over my chilled cake and just worked quickly to push all the air out from the top and just pull those pleats in the fondant apart and smooth my way down. I use my finger to smooth down the pleats. If you have any little air bubbles that get trapped in there, you can just pop them with a pin and smooth them down. I cut away the excess using my pizza cutter and then using some of that scrap fondant that I rubbed in a little bit of cornstarch, I'm gonna use this to smooth out the cake. This is far easier than trying to use your flat fondant smoother because the fondant can just form to the shape of the cake, just like the cardstock. I cut away the rest of the excess and then using my fondant tool just ran along those lines just to make them a little more defined. I added a wooden skewer into the center and then I'm adding her torso. You can see the shape that I've created. It's tapered at the top and then I just indented slightly under like where her chest would be. I mean like she's Princess Peach. She doesn't really have like a chest going on but you do want to define something. And then I just blunted the bottom so it fit nicely against the base of my cake. I trimmed the skewer down just a little bit so it wasn't poking to the top anymore. And I added two balls on either side for her big puff sleeves. I used a balling tool to just mark out the bottom to make room for her arm and just created a couple lines. I stuck mine on there with water, but you could also use a couple pieces of dried spaghetti. I did have to do that in one of them just to give them a little more support. I added another skewer in the top with enough poking out for the neck and the head, and then added a flesh colored piece of fondant just on top there. I want this to dry because I don't want to squish it down when I add the head later on. So just putting it on there now allows it to firm up and hold its shape. I've got more of that flesh colored fondant and I have a ball that I've rolled out so the bottom is just a bit tapered for the chin. And then with my fingers, I'm going to mark out the area where the eyes are going to go and just making them a little more defined on either side. I used my balling tool to hollow out the eye sockets and then filled them in with some white fondant. I wanted to do just a quick little checky checky, make sure the head was proportioned to the torso. 
And then once I was happy with it, I added a little ball of fondant for the nose and just tried to blend that out into the face. I did wait till the face had firmed up a little bit and I used my soft fondant tool for this. It's gonna depend on how much time you spend on it. You can make sure the seams are pretty much invisible if you work on it long enough. I was pretty close. Modeling chocolate would also be great for this. I just wanted to use fondant. I added a little oval of blue into each eye and then with a fine tip paintbrush and more of that blue shade, I painted the outside of the eye making that the darkest part and then just dragged the color into the center to soften it a bit. I added a black pupil and then a little ball of white in either eye for the catch light. I rolled out two long snakies of black fondant that I tapered on either end and then lined the top of the eye with that. I just attached that with a little bit of water. With a darker shade of pink, I rolled out an oval for her mouth and then just indented the center with my fondant tool. And I also added just little smile lines on either side with my X-Acto knife. I finished the face off with just some black food coloring and added a couple lines for the eyelashes on either side. I used this scalloped edge circle cutter I had and cut out some more of that darker pink fondant and then I just trimmed around the edge and I'm using that to create the collar on her dress. You can see I popped on her head and then with more of that dark pink fondant I'm going to create the fabric that's on either side of her dress. I don't know what that's called, the tussle, bustle, something princessy. So at this point, this is what she looked like. And now to start on her arms, I have always struggled with like human-like arms, hands. It's all kind of tricky for me, but I'm working on it. I rolled out a long snaky of white fondant and then I pressed the end for the hand portion and just tried to thin out where the wrist is gonna be. I blunted the end and thinned that out even more, and then I'm going to cut out her fingers. I very carefully spread them out and then went back in with my X-Acto knife to just thin them out a little bit more, trim down the thumb and the pinky, and just tried to give them a little more definition so they didn't look like weird block hands. I held it up to my cake just to make sure I didn't make them super long and then I just on one side indented and tried to spread it out a bit. I got a little bit of pink food coloring on there and that's all that is. Sorry. And I used the back of my fondant tool just to make it even bigger. I want this to be able to slip on to the other part of her arm so it does look like a glove. I have a little cylinder of that flesh tone fondant and I've got that on a piece of dried spaghetti. I trimmed it down if I needed to and just had spaghetti going into her puff sleeve and a little bit sticking out at the bottom for the glove to slip on. Once I was happy with the position, I just went back in and redefined like the elbow area and the wrist a little bit more. I'm using yellow for her hair and I added it in pieces because it's kind of like pretty Medusa hair. It goes all over the place. There's a bunch of different pieces. I added them all separately and I know it looks crazy, but once it was all finished, I did blend everything together with my fondant tool just by adding the hairlines. I'm just going to show you a little hair adding montage. I rolled out two little circles of the flesh colored fondant and cut them in half and added them on either side for her ears and then just finished that off with a little ball of blue fondant right underneath there. For the pendant on her chest, I added a oval of blue fondant and then just lined that with a really thin snaky of white. Once it had firmed up just a smidge, I painted that white with a little bit of gold.
For the crown, I have a strip of white fondant and I just cut out some little triangles out of the top and then wrapped that around in a circle and let that firm up before I added it to the top of the cake. P.S. I used water when I was attaching most of my fondant pieces. You could also use edible glue if you don't think water is going to be strong enough for you. I slapped some really light pink fondant on my board and then with the same color of pink fondant I used for the side pieces, I'm just lining the bottom and making sure that I'm pressing in to my pleats. So you can see I added the crown, I painted that gold as well and added a couple little ovals for the gems. And then with some pink color dust, I'm just gently brushing over the cheeks. And this was a final result guys, I really hope you like her. I'm not really an expert at doll cakes, but I'm super happy with how she turned out. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the others videos. I have them all linked below in a playlist. They're all fantabulous and subscribe to them as well. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.